Calculus Curve Sketching Part 1 As this is a more advanced calculus course, it is assumed that you have done some calculus curve sketching at this stage, up to at least cubics, third degree polynomials. This is the sort of thing we'll be covering in this video. Let's form a list of what you need to find. Not necessarily in the order of finding. That depends on convenience. You need to find the axis intercepts. For the x intercepts, you may need to use Newton's method if the intercepts are irrational, if the zeros are irrational. Differentiate. Equate the derivative to zero. And solve for x to find the x values of the stationary point. The x values for which... The gradient of the curve is zero, where the curve is horizontal, parallel to the horizontal axis. Substitute those x values of the stationary point into the original equation to find the y values of the stationary points. Differentiate the derivative for a second derivative, substitute the x values into the second derivative, and if it's positive, then it means a minimum, a local, local minimum. Negative means a local maximum. And if the second derivative is zero, that is inconclusive. You're going to have to draw up a table and test the concavity before and after that particular x value. This will come up in a, an example just now. And note that... Points and inflections do not have to be stationary points. I spoke about the order earlier, and this is, this is where it comes up here. If you have to use Newton's method, that means you have to estimate the x-intercepts. And quite often it's a good idea to put onto the Cartesian plane what you have, such as the local maxima minima, because that will give you an idea of where the x-intercepts are going to be for an estimation. Let's try the first example. That's a cubic. You've done cubics before, hopefully. If you take out a common x, you'll get a quadratic, which has irrational zeros. You could use quadratic formula to find those zeros. But in this course, I'm saying to use Newton's method because we need to practice Newton's method. Differentiate, equate to zero. I divided through by three just to simplify the equation. I'm allowed to do that in an equation. Factorize, and there are the x values. Find the second derivative by differentiating the first derivative. Investigating whether negative one gives a positive or negative second derivative. Take negative one, slot it into there. You do not need to show this working. You could do it on your calculator. But here I think you'll be able to see six times negative one minus six will give you a negative. So that means local maximum at negative one. Substitute negative one into the original and get five. At 3, do the same thing. Substitute 3 in there. We get a positive at x equals 3. Local minimum at 3. Substitute into the original negative 27. Y intercept 0 by substituting 0 for x. Let's put this onto the curve so far. Because we still need to find the x intercepts. And we're going to use Newton's method, which means we have to estimate. So, let's put in our local maxima and minima. Notice I put a curve there for a maximum, a curve there for a minimum to give me an idea. I already have an idea that this curve is doing that. I can see that. Let's put in the y-intercept. And we could estimate just by continuing this up, continuing that down. There is the one about negative comma eight. There's the other one, about 4,8. Let's now use Newton's method. 
new estimate equals previous estimate minus function value of the estimate over the derivative value of the estimate. So I'm going to take that and substitute a n. I'm going to take the derivative of that and substitute a n, and there they are there. Now I'll slot in negative one comma eight. Hopefully it'll give you negative one comma eight because by Newton's method, once we have a repetition, we know that we're going to keep getting that. Negative one comma nine, no, not really yet. Substitute that in. Negative one comma nine, that's fine. So I can take negative one comma nine and replace negative one comma eight. Now we do the same for four comma eight. We get four comma nine. So we have to repeat. 4, 9 again means that that's fine for our estimate. We can replace 4, 8 with 4, 9. We're now ready for our curve. We have all the shapes ready, so we can now slot in the curve. You have all your working here. We have all our working, so why don't you pause and have a look at the working, have a look at the curve, make sure you understand it. Let's now look at a fourth degree polynomial. Same system, derivative equal to zero. Derivative equal to zero. Common factor of 4x squared, the 4 could actually go anyway, being an equation equal to naught. But anyway, that gives us x is zero, x is three. Substitute into the original get the y value, substitute to the original, get the y value. Second derivative, differentiate. Now I'm going to take this x value, 3, substitute into there, and I can see that I get a positive, therefore it's a local minimum at 3, negative 26. 3, negative 26. When I substitute zero into there, I get zero, and that's a problem because that is inconclusive. So we're going to have to draw up a table. What we're going to do is this is the x value, this is the second derivative, zero, before zero, after zero, second derivative, zero, second derivative. There we are. So less than zero, I'm going to take any number less than zero as long as I don't encroach on any previous stationary points. And there's no stationary point near there because the next, the only other stationary points are three, which is well after zero. So negative one into there gives me a positive. I can substitute one in because the next stationary point is only a three and I get a negative. Positive means concave up, negative second derivative, concave down. If I put that together, this following that, I'll have myself a point of inflection, and it's at 0, 1. 0 for x, 1 for y. y intercept 0, 1. Substitute 0 and you get 1. We've already done that. Now let's put these onto the curve. Let's put the local minimum. There it is. Notice up a little curve there to see. Point inflection at 0, 1. So at 0, 1, I'm going to put that point of inflection there. Remember, this is from second derivative positive, second derivative negative. And the y intercept goes in. Well, it's on the point of inflection. Now I need to estimate. Right, I estimate there, it's already there, probably about 0, 0,7. This is 3, so this is going to go up to there, so probably about 4,2. Let's draw a little line there to see. There we are. 0, 0,7, about 4,2. Now I'm going to use Newton's method. Here's the formula. 
substitute 0, 0,7 into that for the top and the derivative of that for the denominator. There we are. And that simplifies to 0, 0,7. And that's marvelous because that means we've already finished that one. And we can put 0, 0,7 there. Now we need to go to the other one, 4, 2. Slot that into the formula. There it is there. Oh dear, we get 4. So we're a bit out there. So we need to now substitute that in to get a value for A3. I'll leave that to you. I'll just put the answer. We're going to get 4 again, which means therefore 4 can go over here. There we are. Now we have all the information we need to sketch this curve through four, through the turning point. There we are there. So there is our curve. There's the working. Pause. Have a look at the working. Make sure you understand how that graph came about. Here's another one for you to try now. So pause and try it yourself. So first thing we find is derivative. If you had trouble with it, just do step by step. Try each step yourself. Derivative 4x cubed plus 6x squared. There we are. E equated to 0. I can take out a 2x squared. The 2 could have gone because it's equal to naught, But that's here, neither here nor there. From here, x is 0. From there, negative 1 over a half, negative 3 over 2, negative 1 comma 5. Doesn't matter which form you use. They're all the same. Substitute into the original. Negative 5. Substitute into the original. Negative 6 comma 7. Now we're going to differentiate to find the second derivative. And I'm going to look at negative 1 and a half. Use a calculator. Put it into a calculator and see. We're going to get a positive, which means a local minimum at negative one comma five, six negative six comma seven. When we substitute the zero, we got to get zero. Guess what that means? Inconclusive does not provide enough information. So here we go with the table again. There we are. Zero less than one. Let's try negative one. Might be a bit close to negative one and a half. You can try closer to zero, like negative a half. You have a calculator. And you can try one there. You get a negative there, concave down, positive there, concave up. Y intercept there for point of inflection, zero, negative five. Y intercept, zero, negative five. Let's take this information and put it on the Cartesian plane. There's your local minimum. Point of inflection at 0, negative 5. There we are. And y intercept at 0, negative 5. So we have both on the same point. Now have a look. Must be coming from here, there, down to there, and then up again. Let's put in those tails. There we are, so we can estimate. About 1, 1. About negative 2,3, maybe 2,4. Let's leave it negative 2,3. Okay, so we can have some fun with Newton's method. Right, into Newton's method. There's the top line. Exactly the original. 4x cubed plus 6x squared for my derivative. Substitute of negative 2,3. We get negative 2 comma 4. Oh dear. If we substitute negative 2 comma 4 in there, we get negative 2 comma 4 back again. So therefore, we know we have negative 2 comma 4 there. Let's put 1 comma 1 in. Yeah. And we get 1 comma 2. Let's find a 3. We all need 2. We get 1 comma 2 again. Great. So therefore, here we have. 1, 2. We are ready for our curve. There we go. There, inflection, local minimum, and up again. There we are.
Hope you managed. Let's now look at one involving trigonometric functions. Note pi pi radians. You cannot use degrees in this situation. You cannot say degrees minus cos of degrees. Cos of degrees is a ratio, therefore no units. Radians actually have no units either. We we can could loosely call it a unit, but remember the ratio the radian is the length of the arc opposite the angle divided by the radius. So it's a length divided by a length which actually gives you no unit it's a ratio. So now we need to solve this one. Well, let's do that first before I go any further with radians. So we need to differentiate. There we go. Derivative of x is 1. Now, when you look at minus cos 2x, that is a composite function. Outside function cos, inside function 2x. When you differentiate the outside function, you get minus sine 2x, but that makes a plus sign, so we have a plus sine 2x. The inside function is 2x, so we must multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is 2. That's where that 2 comes from. Equal to naught. Now we need to solve. Take 1 across, becomes negative 1, divide by that 2. There we are. Now remember at this stage, if you've watched by the videos on trigonometry, you'll have heard umpteen times that sine, cos, and tan are selfish functions. They will not let go very easily at all. I want to get it down to x. I cannot get rid of that 2 without getting rid of the sine x. I can use a double angle formula, but that's going to introduce sine and cos, which is just going to complicate the issue. When I get rid of the sine, Remember, full general solution. Full general solution. So I need to say, where is sine negative? Third and fourth quadrants. Plus k360. k element of z. Now I say 360 because I'm being naughty. Because have a look here. I'm putting it as degrees first. Let's be like the tourist who goes overseas and keeps converting back to his home currency to work out what things are worth or what they cost. Now you are welcome to do that too. If you're used to degrees and you're still at school using degrees, then why don't you work in degrees and then convert to radians? Pi is equivalent to 180 degrees. 2 pi to 360 degrees. So that there is 2 pi. That is 2 pi. That is 2 pi. That is pi. And that is pi divided by 6. 180 divided by 6. And we say pi by 6. There we are. Have a look. 180 degrees. Pi. Plus 30 degrees. Plus pi by 6. Plus 2k pi. 360 is 2 pi. So k360 is, you could write k times 2 pi. Or 2k two pi. 360 degrees. 2 pi. Minus 30 degrees, pi by 6, plus 2k pi again, k element of z. Now, even at this stage, you have a calculator, I'll leave it to you. We know the answers have to be between negative pi and pi, which is negative 3, 1, 4, approximately, and 3, 1, 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to say, well, let's let's k be 0, and I'm going to work out the value of pi plus pi divided by 6, and divide the answer by 2, and see if it falls between negative 3 comma 4 and 3 comma 1 4. Then I'm going to try pi plus pi divided by 6 plus 2 times pi, for k equal to 1. Divide the answer by 2 and see if it falls into the interval. And I can try k negative 1. So I'll try pi plus pi divided by 6 minus twice pi equals divided by 2 and see if it falls into the interval. And just give the answers as decimals. There we are. There are four decimal answers. There are four answers. 
because when we're dividing by 2, it doubles the number of, when we have 2x, it doubles the number of answers within 360 degrees. Now I'm going to find second derivative. How do I get that? Derivative of 1 is 0. Derivative of 2 sine 2x. Well, let's forget the 2 for now and say, well, derivative of sine of 2x is going to become cos of 2x times derivative of the inside, which is cos 2x times 2. Now let's call back that 2. We've got a times 2 from the derivative, another 2, 4 cos 2x. Now I have to try each of these into 4 cos 2x. First one, less than 0, local maximum at negative 1, 3, sub into there, negative 0, 4, 4. Greater than 0 at negative 0, 2, 6, local minimum positive at 0, negative 0, 2, 6, sub into there, negative 1, 1, 3. Substitute 1, 8, 3, you get less than 0, negative. Local maximum at 1, 8, 3, sub in there, get your y value. And greater than 0 at 2,88, local minimum at 2,8, sub into your original 2,01. So there we now have our local maximum and minima. Y intercept, negative 1, sub naught into there, you get negative 1. So we have that information. Let's slot what we have onto the axis. So we're going to slot our local maxima and minima Notice maximum shaped like that, minimum shaped like that, maximum shaped like that, minimum shaped like that. Y in step negative 1. There we are. Now if you look at this, let's go here. We must be coming from there, then there, then way down to here, then there, and then down again. So there's only one x-intercept there. Let's draw a little line estimate there. That looks about 0, 0,5. So let's use Newton's method, 0, 0,5. And if I substitute into a1 minus f of a1 over f prime a1, I get 0, 0,5, 2. Well, I'm talking about an axis here, and I can't accurately show correct two decimal places, so rounding off to 1 again, that's 0, 0,5. So there we are, it'll be fine, 0, 0,5. And there's our graph. Notice, there it is, there's that. There's the original graph, there, 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 there. So therefore, there's our graph. And one for you to try. Pause, try it, and then I'll go through it. But first find the derivative. We differentiate cos 2x, composite function, inside function 2x, so it becomes negative cos 2x, negative sine 2x, multiplied by derivative 2x being that. Minus sine x, well, sine x differentiates to cos x, so minus cos x, equal to naught. Oh dear, I'm going to have to use my double angle formula here, I can see that. So let's use it and just sort out. I've actually multiplied through by negative 1, and there it is. This here is 2 sine x cos x, multiplied by 2 gives you 4 sine x cos x. We can take out a common factor of cos, and that gives us two equations. Cos x equals 0, and 4 sine x plus 1 equals 0. So therefore, cos x equals 0, or sine x is negative a quarter. Now remember, we're still in radians. So you think of the cos graph. It starts there, at 1, 
comes down at 90 degrees, it's at zero. So therefore, that has a 90. Then it continues down to minus 1 at 180 degrees, back up to zero at 270 degrees, and then 360 degrees. So therefore, cos x is zero at 90 and 180, and obviously every 180. So therefore, it's 90 plus k180, or in other words, pi by 2 for 90, 180 divided by 2, plus k pi. There we are. 90 plus k180. This one here, full general solution. So therefore, x is equal to sine negative means third quadrant, 180 plus, fourth quadrant, 180 minus. Now, please, please note, that's 0, 0,25. Don't enter the negative. 0, 0,25. When you put 0, 0,25 and you come straight back with 0, 0,25, that is just a coincidence. I can assure you that 0, 0,25 is shift sign 0.25. And it gave me that. Plus k, 2k pi k element of z. I'm going to work those out. So I'm going to solve this now. we end up with that. I've gone to all decimals now. Much easier than looking at these pi's the whole time. That becomes 3,39. See it's 3,14 plus 0, 0,25. 0, 0,25 plus 2k pi. Well, 2 pi is 6,28. Twice 3,14. Same for that 2 pi. And then I'll have 6,28 minus that 6,03. But that's worked on the calculator. Now it's between negative pi and pi. So I now need to look and say, well, I've got to go between negative 3,14 and 3,14. And I work out values of k that'll do it. Zero won't, for example. k can't be, x can't be 3,39. That's bigger than pi. So we go for it. There are the possible answers there. All right. Now, I have the x values of the stationary points. I need to differentiate again. Well, yeah. see that's negative 2 cos sine 2x, negative 2 sine 2x, so the negative 2 is there. Sine 2x goes to cos 2x times 2, so that's how we get that. Cos x goes to a negative sine x, with a minus gives you plus sine x. There we are. Like that. Now, I need to substitute each of those values in to see whether I get positive or negative. Note these y values. I get each by substituting the x value into the original to get the y value. Y intercept, substitute 0, I get 1. So there we are. We're going to slot. There we are. That's all our information in. 2 x intercepts. Have a look here. That goes up there. This goes here. So the graph looks like this coming here. Up there like that, down there, up there, and then etc. So let's put in my little sections there to find the x intercepts, and it's about 0, 0,5, 2, 6. Newton's method, function value, derivative of function value. Oh, 2, 6, that's great. 0,5, oh, 0,5 as well. So that's great. You see, I came out with 0,5 using 0,5. I came out with 2,6 using 2,6. So there is our graph.